Good morning, folks. The Barrel Balloon Mission, sending up extremely high floating monitors detecting electron loss from Earth's radiation torus, known as the Van Allen belts, especially that which is integrated into the system via magnetic field lines guiding the energy to the poles. We are just days away from our next eclipse. May 25th, the highlight of the weekend for the Western world as the Earth puts a shadow on the moon. I'll come back to sky watching when I come back to the quake watch. Speaking of quakes, though, the Kamchatka quake swarm died down a bit from the previous day. Most activity could actually be found on the western coast of South America, including the largest of the day and three of the top four. In Mobile Bay, Alabama, there's a mass fish die off of red herring. Well north of that in Maryland, the Calvert Cliffs nuclear plant was shut down for the second time in weeks, this time over problems in the water system. In Costa Rica, we had a volcano come to life. We'll take a moment to watch these shots before we shift to weather. In Europe, this cell brings severe flooding to northern Germany and multiple threats in Italy and the greater Mediterranean. I like giving my Northland friends a shout, but I'm now informed I have many watchers from the rest of the North Island and the South. How cool. Thunderstorms will favor the North today and the same goes for Australia. A heat wave scorches western India, while eastern coastlines get the daily Bay of Bengal downpours. Got coastal systems at the U.S.-Canada border and another north in Alaska. Wind map reveals a weaker but maintained counterclockwise low driving colder northern air down to meet this line of moist heat coming north from the Gulf. I am dead center in today's storm zone on the southeast edge of the low pressure system. New gamma burst after a six day drought. Happened just before dinner time yesterday in the eastern U.S out of the Taurus constellation. Now we come to the big question. With the sun sitting in Taurus, did the Swift telescope catch this burst from the periphery of our star or from something on our star itself? Wouldn't be the first time our sun went gamma momentarily. Solar wind telemetry indicates we are taking the beginning of a corona hole stream today, a day earlier than NASA expected. The speed ramp is expected, but enduring density suggests we caught the edge of this stream to start. The solar wind today will be the thing to watch as magnetometers haven't had much deviation and rheometers show only minor plasma penetration, but the KP index did show brief instability around the initial time of impact, so we'll need to watch for more. Flaring continues its decline, but with renewed hope of flaring going forward. As you check the remnants of the X-flare maker now fully decayed with the leading delta spot split enough to lessen all concern. The active regions cresting indeed appear ready to pick up the slack if they can survive on the Earth-facing disk. While the only M-flare came two days ago behind the northeastern limb, this southern group has popped ejecta. It appears the umbral field will keep this opening going forward, and today we see the northern corona hole swinging in. But honestly, the focus should be on the weekend and forward. The next corona hole is visible coming in, and it's on the equator with good size. She will turn and face us more directly as the eclipse occurs, along with a surprisingly condensed set of geocentric alignments, kind of the last good ones for about a month as you can see. Below the southern sunspot shown earlier is the lateral plasma filament we should monitor for eruption. I'll leave you with a surface event and backside CMEs off the northwestern limb in the background, close up of the new northern sunspots and a dazzling plasma filament at the solar north pole. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.45 a.m. eastern time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.